My name is Techno Barbarian. What you're about to see here is the end result of over nine months of planning, execution, engineering, troubleshooting, problem solving, persistence, a whole lot of sweat, and a little bit of blood. But I think it's unlike anything you've ever seen before. So I hope you all enjoy the tour of my DIY stealth U-Haul tiny home toy hauler. What's going on everybody? Techno Barbarian here with my first ever box truck tiny house tour. Welcome, if you're new here, I convert U-Hauls into tiny homes. This is my first ever client build. That's right, I have my own personal prototype that I have yet to make a tour for. So if you wanna see that one, be sure to subscribe, stay tuned. I do, however, have a full build series up on my channel. So if you wanna see how I built this thing, then go check out that series. We're standing inside a 17 foot U-Haul truck this is a used 2007 box truck from U-Haul that was repurposed and used at a pipe company of some kind. Some other third party started to use this thing for a while. My client purchased it off of them and he came to me and said, hey, I saw your first build. I thought you did a great job on that. Can you build me one? And I thought to myself, yeah, I think I could probably do that. What do you want to do? He said, I want total stealth. I want to be able to use it as a toy hauler. He has a motorcycle. He's an avid motorcyclist and he wants to be able to Take the box truck around with the motorcycle in the back so that he can set up a home base and then unload the motorcycle go get groceries go do travel go check out site c go to work all that kind of stuff so i said that sounds crazy but i could probably do it we've got everything that a home has in terms of comfort here in this box truck so we want no compromises we don't do compromises like van lifers okay we're not van people we're box people box people live luxury and your definition of luxury might change after seeing this tour i've seen a lot of luxury stealth builds out there a lot of tours where i watch it and i immediately say to myself that's not stealth that's not luxury so with those requirements in mind and the experience from my first conversion which was my own personal prototype we set off making a stealth toy hauler tiny home with all the convenience of a natural actual house inside of a 17 foot you hole. Enough talking. Let's go ahead, jump right into the tour. Hope you guys enjoy. Behind me, you'll see the pass-through door that goes to the driver's cab. This allows easy transportation through the cabin to the box. So if you want to pull up to a truck stop, campsite, whatever it is, Walmart parking lot, you're doing a stealth camp somewhere and you want to hide, I thought I'm going to come outside the truck, go around the side, whatever it may be. This is a basically a residential door with a deadbolt on it so you can lock it from the inside or the outside with a set of keys allowing you easy transport in and out. As soon as you enter, you'll also notice your feet are nice and warm because we have heated luxury vinyl plank flooring. We have an electric element running through the center of the truck all the way from front to back, which allows us to stay very comfortable in cold climates. It's also waterproof so you can spill, get it dirty, things like that, and it cleans up quite easily. This is truly floating as well. I see a lot of people installing flooring incorrectly in vans. You're gonna get a lot of expansion contraction. This is actually installed around all the permanent furniture so that you can actually expand without having your floor start to crinkle over time. Directing your attention to the kitchen, let's take a look at what's going on over here. First and ob most obvious is the gigantic 10.1 cubic foot Magic Chef residential refrigerator. That's right, we don't do RV stuff, we don't do 12 volt stuff in here. This is as close as possible to a residential experience as you can possibly get in a 17 foot box. And to accommodate that, Got a regular size freezer, regular size fridge. I mean, this is it's a refrigerator. We're all familiar with that. Runs off 120 volt AC power, which is running 24 seven, 365 from 1600 watts of solar power and a 13,000 watt hour battery bank. The combination of the two allows us to run this. Basically the load of this is entirely negligible as in the eyes of our electrical system because it's so huge. Directly above that, we have our 12 volt mini split air conditioning system. This is the evaporator side of things, the business end, if you will. 
the condenser or compressor, whatever it is, is actually mounted underneath the truck in a stealth fashion. So I see a lot of mini split builds in box trucks and they have the condenser hanging off the side or the back or the front mom's attic. And uh, again, keep in mind my client's requirement was stealth. So we had to make this as stealthy as possible by hiding the condenser underneath the truck behind the side skirts. This is an 8,000 BTU unit, which runs at about 770 watts normal load, which means that we can run this thing pretty much all day and all night off of our gigantic battery bank. Moving into the kitchen, kitchen side of things, we've got a butcher block countertop, removable cutting board slash sink cover with a 13 inch deep stainless steel sink. Faucet with multiple modes here, nothing fancy there. Just a regular old sink like you'd get in a house. You might be able to hear the water pump running in the background. We've got a power switch for that right here so we can turn that on or off whenever we want. Right next to that, we've got a water heater switch. So this is actually a timer switch. This means that if we want to have a shower later, all you have to do is hit that 30 minute button. You notice the lights flickered a little bit because that AC load went to the heater, which is right down here. 2.5 gallons of hot water will be all yours in 30 minutes and that'll automatically turn off after 30 minutes so that you're not wasting any electricity. So you're gonna go out for a hike, go surfing, whatever it is, you know you wanna shower when you come back, hit the 30 minute switch, you're gonna have a warm shower, or two, two warm showers, military style, and we'll take a look at that here in a second. Moving over, we've got a light switch, lights running off 120 volts. This is the standard residential light switch. I don't like 12 volt switches, I don't like RV switches, I don't like RV control panels, I like to keep everything looking as residential as possible. So with that in mind, we have the same kind of light switches that you would see in a house and same kind of GFCI outlets as well. This is 20 amp outlet, which will power anything you want. Induction cooktops, coffee makers, slow cookers, whatever you want runs off of that, no problem. Up above, we got four cabinets, standard residential cabinets here can be arranged in whatever arrangement the client would like, multiple shelves empty at the moment because this is not being used yet, but my advice to the client and to myself is to use it for a while and understand your needs before you actually make any permanent changes because you got to figure out what works on a day-to-day -day basis before you put in two shelves, three shelves, different sections, what height, what depth, all that kind of stuff. We also have a secondary table here. This is kind of a countertop extension, which is... That's actually, this is a universal modular table. This can be used in the kitchen or in the living room area for a second person if they want to have a table over there as they're sitting on the couch. But I think this is a good spot to store it, just generally speaking, because you have the ability to add that extra countertop space. Three drawers here, each with their own latches on there so they don't kind of fling open during transit. Nothing too spectacular about those. We've all seen cabinet drawers before. And down here below we have a few to secret features, actually. This is where kind of the customization comes in in terms of the build and the requirements for this client. We've got the 2.5 gallon hot water heater. I believe that runs at about 1300 watts. You can adjust the temperature there as needed. All of our gray water from the sink drains out. We have our water pump and accumulator there as well. And we have a winch. That's right, our kitchen cabinet. Unlike any kitchen cabinet that I've ever seen before, has a 2,500 pound winch built into the back of it. Why? Well, because we have a toy hauler, remember? We need to be able to load up a motorcycle in this thing and do so without breaking everything in the truck. And the only way to do that is to carefully and slowly raise it up with a winch rather than actually riding it in. And of course, taking into account the fact that this might get resold to maybe an older couple. They're not gonna be as physically adept to drive the motorcycle through 33 inches of opening and into a kitchen cabinet. So this is just comfort, ease, ease of use, everything all around. You'll see that down here. We also have a wheel chalk built into the cabinets. The reason I did this is because the wheel chalk built into the cabinets gives us an extra roughly nine inches so that that bike can come all the way in and not be too close to the back door. Also allows for modular capabilities. If you're gonna get a bigger bike, has a larger, longer wheelbase, then you can fit that in again while also having space at the back to actually fit it inside. So we've got that wheel chalk down there on the bottom. And lastly, on the side of the cabinets, this is the only visible 12 volt RV type component that I actually have in the truck. And that is our tank level monitor. This gives us a rough estimate of exactly how much usage we have in our gray, fresh and black tanks. That's right, we do have a black tank 
system here, which we'll be getting into a little bit more detail in just a minute. 40 gallons of fresh water, 35 gallons of black, and 30 gallons of gray water. So you do have quite a bit of capacity to do those longer trips without having to go for refills. One of the key aspects of the kitchen is our three-in-one microwave air fryer convection oven. That's right. This actually has a convection heating element inside of it. This is the smallest one on the entire market, on the entire planet, as far as I know. This is the same one that I use in my truck. Works amazingly well. I think it's 1100 watts maximum. You can bake stuff in there. You can air fry crispy chips. I've actually done a little stealth camp videos on my channel where I fry some stuff up here and make some pizzas and things like that. So if you want to see that, go ahead and check out the stealth camp videos. Fits perfectly in here. Very small form factor and allows you to do whatever you want. Again, full functionality of an actual house, just in a little bit of a smaller format. Directly above the kitchen, we have a skylight and our vent systems. So when you're cooking or you want to cool down, whatever it may be, you can open that up, take in air, exhaust air out, whatever you need to do. This has the rain shield on it, so if it does get wet and it's open, it'll automatically close for you. The skylight adds in a lot of natural light. It's also key for stealth build because we don't have any windows in here. And uh, I hate to say it, but if your build has windows in it, it's not stealth. Sorry. Just uh, hate to be the bearer of bad news, but that does not meet at least my technical definition of stealth. If I see a box truck on it with windows, I'm automatically thinking something's going on in the back, which is why we have no windows anywhere in here. This does allow for ample natural light, even if you do have the back closed up and you want to live in here doing things on a day-to-day -day basis, you're not going to turn into a cave troll. All right, moving on behind me, we've got the bedroom area. So we got the permanent bed over here on this side. This will easily sleep somebody up to, I think, six foot five. It's very long. It's about 30 inches wide and it is expandable as well. So when you want to sleep two people up here, then you certainly can with the expansion unit available there. Beds are probably one of the poorest design choices that I ever see in most van builds because they'll put a big permanent bed that takes up all kinds of space and you only use the bed when you're sleeping. Otherwise that space is unusable. So in this particular case, despite the fact that we can sleep two people with a mom's attic conversion, which generally you have to have a permanent bed coming out with some kind of framing this way and you're sleeping with ways this, I think, is the first time I've ever seen the lengthwise utilization of the mom's attic with a convertible additional bed. So, generally speaking, when you're solo, you can run this with just a normal bed. You still have full usability of the space. But if you do have two people, at night, when you need to, you can pull the bed out, pop the bed on here, and you've got enough space for two people to sleep very comfortably while still retaining you know, usage of the rest of the truck. Down below the bed, we have all the storage area. This is basically your closet slash additional kitchen cabinets. You've got a few very large drawers for large items. This can fit anything from slow cookers to appliances, pots, pans, or clothes. Whatever you want to put, dry food, doesn't really matter. There's an outlet at the back of this cabinet as well, which means that if you want to have a permanent kitchen appliance in here, like a slow cooker, an air fryer, whatever it may be, you can put that in here. And you don't have to use up the countertop space. You can have that running straight from here while it's plugged in all the time. A couple other drawers here. Everything that we're seeing is built out of half inch plywood. So there's no cheap flimsy little plywood on the bottom of these drawers. These are all screwed and glued together. Very sturdy on heavy duty drawer slides that are also self-closing. These are all about 30 inches deep. So you can fit a lot of stuff in these. Dealer's choice. Down below, probably my favorite door right there. Feature that I haven't seen in any van. And again, we talked at the beginning about having all the amenities of a house. We do box life, we don't do van life, we don't compromise around here, which is why we have a two-in-one washer and dryer built into the truck. So this allows you to not have to rely on laundromats. You go out for a hike, you get all sweaty, you come back, you're situated out in the middle of nowhere, you don't wanna leave just to go wash your clothes. Well, you don't have to anymore because this washer and dryer comes out, fits conveniently right in the bathroom. You can fill it with the shower head and it drains directly into the shower pan. Spin dry, you can hang up your clothes right in the bathroom there as well. You've got full laundry services at all times right in the truck here. Moving over, we have our open format closet space, which is, as the name implies, open format. You can put whatever you want in here. We do have four shoe racks in the back Client wanted storage for at least six pairs of shoes. So we got four, you can keep up and out of the way. Two can go elsewhere inside the closet or out by the door. And this is a carpeted area for whatever you wanna put in here. Probably the best feature about this though is the clothes hanger, 30 inches deep. You don't have to fold up your stuff anymore and jam it into little 
drawers or anything like that so they're all permanently wrinkled you got to wear suits no problem hanging up right here they're always crisp you got to put some big jackets in there whatever it may be pants you can fit a lot of clothes on a 30 inch rack and it slides all the way out so you're not in there bending over and reaching towards the back digging through it nothing like that i thought that was a uh, quite the nice addition you'll also notice on the door itself we have our control panels for climate control and the battery system like i said before i don't like to see control panels out in the open it takes away from the residential experience in my mind so we've got our heated floor thermostat diesel heater thermostat and our battery monitor we're currently at about 86 percent after running ac for several hours so diesel heater five kilowatt this is a gen 2 max speeding rods diesel heater which means it has automatic altitude adjustment it's more fuel efficient the fuel pump works a little bit better as well and some other upgrades in there too this thing is incredibly hot and this box is incredibly insulated two inches poly iso all the way around top bottom and sides including a double pane insulated glass sliding door at the back meaning this is basically a refrigerator when it's cold and a heater and oven when it's hot so you won't have to run this very often and of course the battery sensor it just gives you an idea of where you're at in terms of that which is in this truck something you're probably not going to have to look at very often just because we've got so much battery bank down below you see two vents one is an input vent for the electrical compartment this is actually for uh, cooling all the components in the electrical box down right next to that over on the other side we have the heat inlet the actual diesel heater itself is mounted in the driver's cab that hot air is routed through the cab into the box and comes out right here the benefit of that being you don't have to hear the heater run you also save that space and it's a lot easier to install by drilling through the fiberglass of the cab rather than the aluminum floor of the box like i said before we're running 13 kilowatts hours of battery 13,000 watt hours is a lot and for those of you who incorrectly measure battery capacity with amp hours uh, that's about 1100 amp hours in 12 volt language Ooh, shots fired huh yeah no the proper measurement is watt hours we've got 13,000 ish translates to about roughly 11 battleborne batteries so if you can imagine 11 battleborne batteries stacked up in there obviously there's not enough room for that which is another reason why we go with diy batteries because they're a lot more space efficient so We've got a two-in-one grow watt inverter solar charge controller 3000 watt inverter with up to 2000 watt input from the solar panels up top our solar system is 1600 watts which is the biggest i could possibly get up there while also leaving room for skylights and roof vents that allows us to do pretty much anything we want you can run the ac all day long while that that sun is out the ac will continue to run at night because you can run the AC and still be charging your batteries with 1600 watts of power. That AC unit is only 770 watts running, so do the math. You can run that, you can run other stuff, and still be charging your battery. Another big benefit of doing the box truck, a lot more room up top for those big solar panels. We have four lighting zones in the truck. We've got the living room, the kitchen, the bathroom, and also the bedroom. So everyone has its own set of light switches, in this case, the bedroom lights are a little modular they're also touch capable all four of these lights are on one circuit which you can use to easily turn on or off i placed this specifically so that you can hit this easily after you come in through the pass-through door and let's say at night you just want to be able to lay in bed with a light on while you're reading and you don't want to get up out of bed to turn off the light switch all you got to do is reach up turn it on turn it off you hear something in the night you don't want to come all the way down here to turn the switch on and off well you have the ability to turn all these on or off from the lights themselves and these are also dimmable to some degree so you can make them brighter or dimmer as per your preference storage up here on the left side for mattresses sleeping materials comforter blankets whatever you want my initial thought process was this is perfect setup for a tri-fold rv mattress that would fit perfectly right up in here so that when you're not actually using this space to sleep in you can potentially use it for storage by keeping your mattress and everything else up and out of the way up here in these shelves. I might as well mention the ceiling material here. You'll notice it's got kind of a reflective quality to it, and this is not your standard kind of wood plank ceiling that you see in a lot of builds. I think that's a little boring, it's kind of tiring. It gives it kind of a cheap van look in my opinion. So we went with more of a modern look. The client did want light colors, modern kind of farmhouse look. So this is actually whiteboard 
four by eight whiteboard panels and we have a proprietary system for hanging these up. And when I say we, I mean I, because this is the second time that I've used these and I love the way that they look. There's only four of them in here. It's very cheap. They're incredibly lightweight, which means that you're not adding a lot of extra, you know, tonnage to the truck itself. And uh, they just look good. They're very easy to clean if you scuff them up. The only thing, the only weakness I will say is if they get wet, we don't want them getting wet. Right behind the kitchen, we have our bathroom. This is a Rec Pro sliding retractable bathroom door, self-cleaning. That gives us easy access to the bathroom. The second switch over here on the wall is our bathroom light. Currently, I have it in fan mode only, but it's dual operation, fan and light. So you have its own dedicated light in here. And this is just your full wet bath. There's no gimmicks here. There's no Autobot transformers, toilets. So you got to pull out of the secret compartments when you want to use it. There's no compromises for the bathroom. You got, oh, I don't, well, I try to never use it. I try to go and pop. No, this is a black tank system, 35 gallons. Use it whenever you want. Number two, number one, doesn't matter. It's very easy to empty. The benefits of the black tank are you only have to empty it like once a month. So overall, you're handling human waste a lot less frequently than you are with a composting toilet, cassette toilet, whatever other kind of toilet on the market. Also, the other key benefit, this this toilet, this bathroom system here with an actual flushing toilet with water in it. I mean, you know, if you've ever been in an RV, you get a toilet somewhat like this. It's got, it's at residential height. It's residential width. It feels good to sit on. It's not... Again, no compromises. Well, the black tank system is superior for multiple reasons. Number one being, of course, like I said, you handle human waste a lot less than you would with any other system, but also number two, cost. The black tank plus the toilet plus everything you see in this bathroom, including the walls, the medicine cabinet, the shower hardware, the flooring, everything in total is less than one nature's head composting toilet. So. Keep that in mind if you're doing your own build. The only reason I think van people don't do black tanks in their builds is because you can't actually fit a black tank underneath. So you're kind of limited in that option. Again, we don't do van life here, we do box life. So moving on, we've got full medicine cabinet. This is a standard residential medicine cabinet you can use to put medicine or whatever else you want. Shower is a shower, no gimmicks, nothing like that. Turn it on, you get water. If you have the heater on, you have hot water. And uh, this is removable as well. I actually, so when I posted the build video for the bathroom, somebody on my channel commented and said that you could use this as a bidet. And I didn't even think about that, but you totally could use this as a bidet. So we also have a bidet feature here. Again, something that uh, I don't think I've seen in any other build. Waterproof toilet paper holder, which allows you to store your toilet paper and also take showers without having to worry about it. You don't have to stash it away. Again, you don't have to do the whole transformers thing. Anytime you want to take a shower, you got to move this out, move that in, do this, do that. Put a whole puzzle together. Nope, just walk in, turn on the water, take a shower, take a number two, whatever you want, do both at the same time maybe. Come on out, that's it. It's done, easy, no compromise, pure comfort, just like in your house. Flipping you guys around, let's take a little look at the living room here. So we have a convertible couch bed system. This is a folding mattress, actually, that you can unfold out into a full-size bed, lays on the floor with the uh, ability to sleep two extra people. So we have a toy hauler that can sleep four people comfortably when the bike's not in here. But we've got uh, the second lagoon table mount here with our table system. Again, modular table system. You can use the smaller table. You've got another mount over here on the side of the couch for a second person to use a table. That all depends on the situation. There is a storage area underneath this so that when it is folded out, you've got all the bedding material ready to go. Pillows, blankets, comforters, whatever. Everything's stored right underneath so that fold out, it's all right there. Which also is great for people like me who are lazy and don't want to make their bed. All you got to do is mash it up back into the box, fold it up, and your bed's made. Again. I tried to go for that minimalistic look. I mean, the client did want like a farmhouse kind of natural looking thing, but I threw it, I throw in a little touch of, you know, modernity, slick elements here and there. There's no like rustic handles on here or anything like that. This whole thing is all handles, so you can lift it up anywhere you want. It's on the gas strut, of course, so that stays open. Other than that, nothing too spectacular going on there. You do, however, have a wall outlet down behind on the left. That's where you'll plug in your washing machine, but also where you can plug in your day-to-day -day stuff 
laptops, phones, electronic devices, whatever you want to charge from there. It's got two AC outlets plus two USBs built in, so you don't even need to bring your, your little converter box thing. You just plug it in the USB. On the opposite side, we have our TV along with a wall outlet down here. In case a client wants to go with an electric motorcycle, he can just plug it in, charge it right from here. And you'll also see that we have some mounts on the floor itself. So these are your standard kind of cargo motorcycle mounting systems you see anywhere else like trailers and things each of those is 2,000 pounds those are bolted in through the floor of the box so they are very sturdy those aren't going anywhere most motorcycles are only like three to four hundred pounds anyway so that is more than sufficient to hold those in place the tv comes on a swivel mount this is a locking mount so if you want to pull this out and then maybe turn it to watch tv in bed 40 inch flat screen it's very thin. I worked hard to get the thinnest TV I could because you are going to be walking in from the sliding glass door into the living room where the TV is. So we don't want that protruding too much into the walking space. And Or you can even turn it to look on the outside if you want to have some, you know, activities outside, grilling out, whatever, and you want to watch the game at the same time. Well, you've got 40 inches to do so. We have a storage cabinet up here. This is kind of a flex space, which is going to allow the client to do, again, whatever he wants with it. It's going to be one of those things where you got to kind of use it a little bit to understand what you want to do with it. It does, however, have two AC outlets and USB. This could be a cabinet. You can close it off, put shelves in there, charge cameras, cell phones, whatever you want, all conveniently accessible right there, or just put a candle and a picture frame in there. Who knows? Whatever you want. So that is the living room. So you might be asking, how do we actually get a motorcycle in this thing? Well, you'll notice behind me that we do indeed have a sliding glass door. This is a residential door, not an RV door. That gives us about 32 inches of open space to load a motorcycle up and into using the winch system we talked about earlier. And of course, we have built in a loading ramp. So that door that's currently closed that you can see back there since we're in stealth mode right now, and it's dark out, so there's no light coming in from my skylight. That will close all the way down to the floor, to the ground level, allowing you to attach the winch all the way down to the motorcycle and load it up very carefully, easily, safely, conveniently with that winch system. Right into the wheel truck, tie it down into the tie downs, and you're up and running. You're good to go. You're off on another adventure. So the reason the sliding glass door is left aligned is because we want the motorcycle to come straight up and in. The final resting place for the bike is left on this, on this wall here because we want it to be out of the way when we're using the truck for day-to-day -day living. That's right, we have full usability of everything in the truck, even if you have the motorcycle in here. The motorcycle's coming in, we want it to come in straight. We don't want to have to come in and then finagle it to the right or the left to get into the final wheel chalk where all the mounts are. We just want to come straight up and straight out. That's why we have our sliding glass door left aligned which also gives us a little bit of room to work with on the outside. So, speaking of that, let's uh, hop outside for a quick walk around. So first and most obvious, it's gonna be the cargo door in the back. We built this out to look like a standard cargo door, like any cargo door, it has two bars on the sides. You got the rubber pads at the top. It's gotta come all the way down to the ground, make contact with the ground so you can load up your motorcycle. So we're using the built-in loading ramp from U-Haul. This comes with every truck. And this will come out to not the entire distance, but if you pull this out three quarters of the way, this is actually going to support the weight of the door plus people standing on top of it. So we're just going to undo these latches here. And this pulls down, not pulls, pulls is not an accurate term. We're actually reusing the garage door roll up spring. So this comes down very easily. You can load and unload this almost with one hand. And we have now an outdoor deck along with all of our beautiful outdoor light getting into that living space. And to facilitate your outdoor adventures, we've got a few different features out here. First of all, 20 amp outdoor outlet, GFCI, plug in whatever you want. And we also have a spray port so you can actually quick connect a hose, spray down your bike before you load it up so you don't get any dirt inside the truck. Sliding glass door, double paned argon, insulated between the two panes so even if you have this open some sun is coming in it's not going to add a whole lot of extra heat but of course you get that view so you back this thing up wherever you want and you're living in a studio apartment at uh, the most luxurious outdoor natural locations with all the amenities of a house what more could you ask for 
I went with the boards on the one side, plywood on the other, covered with grass because I want to save weight, but we also need strength to load up the motorcycle on the board side. I didn't want to use boards on the other side because we didn't want to make this too heavy. So we've got a kind of a two-in-one, a little bit of an outdoor patio slash backyard with a grass pad. Maybe you're pulling up in the middle of a desert somewhere and you want to see some green. I'll tell you one thing, when that sun hits that grass in the morning or in the afternoons, you know, that color that you see outside your window is just, it really adds to any scenario. So loading up your bike, dirt bike, whatever you got in there is going to be pretty effortless with the combination of the wireless remote, the winch, hook it up, and then press the button. It's not one of those super slow winches that takes forever. This is going to load up pretty quick. Let me show you a couple other things on the outside of the truck while we're out here. I mentioned stealth, so... A lot of features you actually can't even see. First of all, we've got our black tank and a gray tank underneath the side skirts here. And we've got it installed such that you can't even see it when you're at ground level. So we got 35 gallon black tank right behind there and 30 gallon gray water tank right in front of it. There is an access panel for the black tank so that when you wanna unload that sucker, you have easy access right in there to everything you need. There's plenty of room back here to attach your hoses and washouts and it closes up nice and quick and easy when you're done. The only real visual modification done to the outside of this truck is right over here. We've got our AC input. So 30 amp shore power. You roll up to a campsite. You want to leach power off your friends while you're staying in the driveway, whatever. You can plug in right there and then the whole system in the truck runs off of that 30 amp inlet. Right behind the driver's cab, there's a small vent. Now this is where we talked earlier about ventilating the electrical cabinet. All the hot air from the electrical components is being generated is constantly exhausted here. This is blowing air 24-7, 365 to keep all that heat out of the living compartment. Making our way around to the passenger side again. No visual modifications done to the outside of the truck. This is the only thing that is even remotely visible is the edge of the solar panels on top. And uh, honestly, nobody's going to realize what those are. So I've shown my truck to people and they know that I have solar panels on top and they still think it's like a roof rack, a ladder rack or something. So it's not something to worry about when it comes to stealth, unless you really want to get anal about it. Behind the rear wheel on the passenger side, we've actually got a hidden storage compartment. Two by two by 10 storage compartment hidden in behind the side skirts. This is lockable. You can put stuff in here with confidence, knowing that it's not going to get stolen. If Even if they find it, they have to unlock it. So. 2x2x10 two by two by storage compartment for hoses, cables, anything related to septic, outdoor stuff. You could probably throw some uh, propane containers in there, whatever you want. And again, completely integrated with the side skirts so that uh, you never even really know it's there. Also, passenger side, we got some more goodies here. 40 gallon freshwater tank right behind this side skirt, as well as our air conditioning condenser, compressor, whatever that thing is that uh, blows all the air around that's underneath there. And a shot of our water tanks as well. Special shout out to all my supporters over at technobarbarian.locals.com. You guys have been following me along the whole way. We've got a lot of people over there building their own box trucks, a whole community with resources from 3D design files of this exact truck, all the way to wiring diagrams and everything in between. So if you're looking for that kind of stuff, go check it out. Also, be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for the tour of my original prototype, which has yet to be completed. That's coming soon. And if you want to see the build series or the stealth camp series where I stealth camp in my prototype all over crazy spots throughout the city, go check that out as well. If you got any comments, I'd love to hear them. What kind of features do you want to see in the next box truck? Something you haven't seen before, because I guarantee you I'm going to be doing quite a bit more of these as we're going along. If you want to build your own and maybe you want me to do it, well, get in touch. I got my email down below. Thanks again for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed.